what we were seeing is that we are trying to understand what is the meaning of a linear transform like this. Now, this is not only in robotics, it is there in all other subjects like signal processing, image processing, big data, okay, where there is lot of data which is going on and your dimensions are very high. Okay, what is the dimension? It is the direction in space. Okay. So, for example, if it is uh, uh, 2 degree of freedom, then x y is enough. Okay. So, if it is uh, 3 degree of freedom, then it is 3. If it is uh, 10 degree of freedom, then there are 10 dimensions. So, that means, there are 10 thetas now. Okay. So, uh, so, when we are looking at a transformation like this, which is in robotics, we are specifically focusing on x dot is equal to j into theta dot. Then, what this fellow is doing is, we saw that it is rotating. Okay. So, this is, uh, it is rotating and it is also translator and then uh, it is scaling. It is what the transformation like this does. And to understand this matrix better, we take the singular value decomposition of the matrix, which means breaking it up into three matrices, which tells us more about the matrix. And uh, this is basically the orthonormal basis vector after rotation, this is the axis before rotation, and this is the singular values, which is given by sigma 1 to sigma n. Okay. And uh, what this basically says is that in the in the in the Jacob in the ellipse, then this is u1 sigma 1 and this is un sigma n. So, this is the direction in which you can move, this is the direction which you cannot move. So, as we are moving because the j contains sin and cos term, so this value of j will start changing. So, the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 will change in space now. Okay. So, when the ellipse will start becoming a circle, if sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 and if sigma sigma n becomes 0, then it will become a straight line. So, depending on where you are in space, uh, that will uh, the shape of the ellipse is determined that way. Okay. Now, uh, sigma 1 is a scalar value. So, u is the vector. So, this is the u is the direction of this axis. So, this axis direction is u 1, this is u n, this is v t uh, 1, v t n. So, it is actually same as when we say a coordinate of a point uh, p is equal to x, y, z. What is the meaning of this? It means x into i plus y into j plus z into k. So, i, j, k are the unit vectors. So, we simply write x, y, z, but what we mean is this, that this is a direction, this, is a, this also has direction, that also has direction. That is the meaning of u in this. Okay. Now, uh, Yeah, so uh, now this matrix is very, very important, but let us not go too much in detail, but this has a lot of uh, other implications. So, one of the implications of this matrix is if I write this transformation x dot is equal to j into theta dot, okay. then if I take the singular value decomposition of j uh, into theta dot, what we will get is three matrices u sigma v t into theta dot. So, I am taking this uh, uh, this uh, singular value decomposition of j in this equation. I am breaking j into three matrices because I want to understand better. So, what we can do is then I can bring this fellow this side. So, it becomes u transpose x dot is equal to sigma into v t into theta dot. So, what I have done, I have broken up j and I have broken it like this. So, I can define a new variable x dot is equal to sigma into uh, theta dot star. So, what I have basically done is I have I have uh, broken up the j matrix into three matrices. This is an axis after rotation, this is axis before rotation, this is the single value sigma matrix. So, from here I am bringing this side. Now, this is an axis. So, an axis is an orthonormal basis vector, which means it is an orthonormal matrix, which means the transpose is the inverse all axes are orthonormal. Okay. So, I can simply take the inverse, which is the transpose. So, I am writing transpose here. This fellow is transpose already. So, I am defining a new vector here, which is called by new uh, variable, let us say, which is given by. Okay. So, now if I want to find that if my joint velocities, so these are my joint velocities, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, these are my joint velocities, theta 1 dot, sorry, are my joint velocities. Now, the joint velocities that we discussed in the morning, they have an upper bound. You cannot have infinite velocity. So, if the joint velocities are governed by a maximum velocity of the motor, then I can normalize this and say that uh, all the velocities normalized is less than equal to 1. 
maximum is what? I am normalizing the velocity. All the motor joint, uh, joint velocities are normalized and I am saying that mod of this is less than equal to 1, normalized velocity. Right, so here I am writing. So what I am doing is I am bringing sigma this side x. Uh, so mod of this is that. So what I am doing is hash divided by sigma. Mod of this is less than equal to one. So theta dot is that. Theta dot is equal to this one. So it's less than equal to one. Right? Have you followed the logic? So all the joint velocities will be having some maximum. Uh, motors will be having some joint velocity, maximum velocity. Okay. So I take. Uh, so, I normalize the joint velocities by dividing by the uh, maximum velocity. So, everything becomes less than equal to 1. And if I take the mod of that, that is square and then square root. So, that is the mod. Okay. Then, if I put it back in this equation, your, uh, this term uh, this term has become less than equal to 1, which is there. So, let us call it this has become less than equal to 1. So, we are left with sigma. Then, I bring sigma this side, it becomes sigma comes at the bottom. Okay. So, this is written as x dot hash into divided by uh, sigma mod. Okay. Now, this term what is it? Mod of this term is x 1 squared divided by sigma 1 squared plus x 2 dash squared by sigma 2 squared plus like this, like this up to x n divided by sigma n squared is less than equal to 1. Right? This one I am taking the mod. So, square and then square root. Okay. So, square is coming x 1 is the first term divided by sigma 1. So, this is coming at the bottom. So, it is becoming 1 by sigma 1. So, sigma is equal to sigma 1 like that up to sigma n. Sigma inverse is equal to 1 by sigma 1 up to 1 by sigma n. So, 1 by sigma 1 in here. So, this is going at the bottom. Now, what is this uh, showing us? This is telling us that if your end effective velocity is contained in this equation. Now, what is this the equation of? This is the equation of a sphere. This is a unit sphere. That means, if your joint velocities are contained in a unit sphere, okay, which is this one, then your end effective velocities are contained in an ellipsoid. This is an ellipsoid. So this is not a sphere. So, this is the equation of an ellipse, but because it is n dimensional, so it is an ellipsoid. So, it is an n-dimensional ellipse in n-dimensional space. Okay. So, this actually shows that if your joint velocity is a, uh, is a unit sphere, then your end effective velocities are in a uh, ellipsoid in space. This one gives you the maximum uh, velocity possible. So, uh, x sigma 1 gives us the direction in which maximum velocity is possible. This one gives us the minimum velocity possible. Okay. So, when we are moving in space, for example, if you have a large degree of freedom system like a leg. So, this has 6, 8 degrees of freedom in one leg. So, now we can move in different directions. So, when I am walking, okay, I will be having some kind of gait pattern. That means, basically I am controlling my velocity and the direction of the velocity is governed by this fellow now. Right. So, there are directions in which I can move and there are directions in which I cannot move or I find it difficult to move. For example, if, if I am standing like this, okay, this is my leg, I am standing like this. If I draw the ellipsoid for this two link system, then the ellipsoid axis comes like this. So, we can plot it and draw. So, I can find the j, which we have just found the j for a two link system. So, from the j, I can put the values of theta 1 and theta 2 and get the Jacobian matrix. Jacobian matrix, I can take the singular value and get the sigma matrix. And then I can get u matrix also, which will give me the direction in space. So, which means that this direction is the direction of the major axis. So, I can move in this direction. That means, if I am standing like this, the the easiest way is to move the leg forward like this. And here it is going backward. So, if I want to move back side, it is very difficult. So, if you stand like this and you start walking backward, it is not easy because your velocity direction is not in that direction. Your velocity is in the forward direction. Okay. So, this also gives us an indicator of which direction you can move easily and which direction you cannot move easily. Okay. And uh, that is called the uh, manipulation ability. So, this is actually a mathematical proof. Let us not worry too much about it, but this actually proves that if your input is a circle, then your output is an ellipse. Okay. And uh, this is happening because this j has all these sine cos terms, funny, funny terms. And this is a metric. This metric is called the manipulation ability. So, the metric 
is called manipulation ability, which is determin determinant of J, J transpose. So, what we are trying to say here now is that if I have a robotic system and I want to move in some direction and I want to say that I should move like this, then I should say that whether it is easy to move like that or not. Easy means it will take less energy again. And how, what is the metric? Simply by finding the determinant uh, of uh, JJ transpose. Okay. So, the direction in which this is getting minimized, that is the direction in which you should move. Okay. So, if my arm is moving in space, I should have a trajectory. How do you decide this trajectory? Essentially, by saying that this is the metric by which we can. Uh, so, if you are doing optimization, you need a cost function. This is your cost function now. Okay. So, suppose I am walking like this, okay. I can have infinite trajectories. So, like from here to here, it can have a trajectory like this, it can have a trajectory like this, it can have like this, it can have infinite trajectories. So, which trajectory will I take? The trajectory which is going to minimize this one. Okay. That means, the energy is also coming down. So, this is also the proof that uh, when we are walking, we all have 8 degrees of freedom per leg. So, that is 16 degree of freedom we have infinite trajectories, but then we all walk in the same way. So, that means that something is being optimized somewhere, right. So, either uh, biological systems are optimized. So, we just saw that when we write our, uh, this angle is always 90 for all of us. When we walk, we walk like this, like this, like this. So, our stride, uh, we will see after a few more classes that it is an S curve like this. And we all walk like this only. Why? Because for this kind of a uh, trajectory, the energy is optimized. So, we all follow this and all biological systems follow this only. That means, we have either learned it or we have, uh, we are uh, evolved such that energy requirement is minimum for all our actions. Okay. So, this is also the proof that uh, uh, this is the metric uh, and determinant of JJ transpose which. Okay. So, when we come to walking mechanisms, then we will look at this, let us not worry about it now, but there is a metric and this is the metric. So, if you are doing optimization, what is the cost function, this is the cost function. This gives us a direct indicator of energy. Now, uh, let us let's not go any more into here. Now, uh, what we are interested in is this equation that we are writing. What we are interested in is this equation x dot is equal to j into theta dot. Okay. Now, uh, So, now we said that this j fellow can be non square, it can be m into n. Okay. Now, all funny funny things happen. What kind of funny things? Suppose I have my hand like this here, okay. this is my x y z, okay. this is my x y z and this is uh, 7 degrees of freedom, there are 3 to 2 degrees of freedom. That means, there are 7, seven actuators here okay. uh, and this is my x y z. Now, if I give some joint velocity here. I am giving some joint velocity here, I am moving this now, but this one is not moving. Now, I am giving some joint velocity, now this one is moving. So, I am moving these joints, the end effector is moving. For this case, I am giving some joint velocity, but the end effector is not moving. So, where did that joint velocity go? I have given some energy, there is no output here. So, it is like the energy has gone somewhere, right, do you follow? but you have given motion, but there is no output. So, what happened to that energy? Right. So, here the hand is moving, I have given some input. Here I have given input, but the hand is not moving. Now, why this is happening? Because for the hand, it is 7 by 6, it is a non square matrix. Let us look at uh, this example here. We have three deg 2 degree of freedom x and y, we have theta 1, theta 2. Right. So, x, y, is a function of theta 1, theta 2. There are two equations and two variables. So, there are two solutions. What are the two solutions? This is one solution, this is another solution. Right. Now, suppose I add one more. Now, x y still remains as x y, but I have one more here theta 3. So, this becomes a function of theta 3 now. So, you have two equations, but three variables. Right. So, what is the meaning of a non square matrix? The meaning of a non square matrix is there are more variables this side than this side. That is the meaning of a non square matrix, non square j. 
Now, what it also means is that if you have more variables here than here, then you have some free variables there. So, to move this in, uh, to have a particular x, y, I can get one solution like this, I can get another solution like this. So, you can get a lot of more solutions now. So, if you have more variables this side, you can get more number of variables this and say this, this fellow will do something else. So, in this case, I am saying three, uh, this is x, y, z, three variables. So, three of this will get to keep this at x, y, z. The other four fellows can do whatever it likes. So, what the other fellow is doing is it is moving, but it is not affecting this at all, right. That is the meaning of a j, non square j. Okay. Now, let us look at this very funny example. Uh, we go a little bit into this, but not too much in detail. So, let us look at this example and then we will proceed. So, the question is I have an object here which has a particular mass. I want to cast this with some force. Okay. How much force should I apply? Question is very simple. Uh, there is an object of having some mass, uh, let us say 2D to make it simple. Now, uh, uh, I want to hold it with some uh, force. Suppose it is M, Mg can have some angle. So, m g cos theta sin theta, okay. but I want to hold it with some force using two fingers. How much force should I apply? So, I am drawing it here. So, this is my f x direction, y direction. There is some force which is acting in 2D. So, f x, f y and m z. There are two finger tips f x 1, f y 1, f x 1, f x 2 and there is friction force f y 1, f y 2. This is the problem. So, I have this object which is 2D, these are two axes. The forces which can act there are f x and f y, it is 2D and it can have a moment about the z axis. So, the external forces which are balancing this is f x 1, f x 2, f y 1, f y 2, right. Now, for static equilibrium, we know that sigma f must be equal to 0 and sigma m must be equal to 0, okay. Let us just assume this is one unit distance. So, if I say sigma f x equal to 0, then forces in the x direction are equal to 0. So, if I write an equation, then f x is equal to f x 1 plus f x 2, right. For static equilibrium, this forces must be balanced by those forces. This is the body mass or weight or whatever. This has to be balanced by that and that. Now, f x is like this. Similarly, f y I can write, then uh, m z I can write. So, f y is equal to f y 1 plus f y 2 and m z is equal to f uh, y 1 into 1 minus f y 2 into 1. There are three equations, 2 d. So, in 3 d there will be six equations. In 2 d there are two force equations, one moment equation, right. So, this body to be in equilibrium, I must find out what is f x 1 and f x 2 and f y and f y 2, right. Now, if I write this in matrix form, then it becomes f x f y m z is equal to 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 minus 1 and here is f x 1 f y 1 f x 2 f y 2. So, I am writing this in matrix form. Okay. So, this equation is equal to f x is equal to f x 1 plus f x 2 f y is equal to f y 1 plus f y 2 a moment about the z axis. So, this is my z axis. So, there is a moment there that is equal to this into a uh, is equal to f y into uh, 1 minus f y 2 into this equation is there. Okay. Now, if I write f, I am writing in more short form f is equal to w into small f. So, this w is this guy. Okay. So, what I what the question was is that I want to find what is this this fingertip force. So, in order to find f, I need to do this inverse into f. So, if I want to find the fingertip force, I have to take the inverse of this matrix W and bring it here, multiply with the external force and I get my fingertip force. Now, if you look at this W, it is 3 by 4, it is a non square matrix, right. So, have I done something wrong or uh, I am playing some trick or something or, or in the real world it is like that. So, for static equilibrium of a body, for a body to be in static equilibrium, forces in the f x 
y and z direction must be 0, meaning there should be no resultant in n direction. So, the external effects which is being applied here has to be balanced by that and that. Direction will be 1 will be minus, automatically that will happen. So, 1 is minus, right. Similarly, there has to be equilibrium in the y direction and there has to be equilibrium in the in the moment, right. That is how I am getting this, this and I have written this. Direction of course, will depend on the direction, does not matter. But the important point I am trying to make here is that this matrix is a non square matrix. So, what is the solution? Hmm? So, this matrix is a 3 cos uh, 4 matrix, which means that the question what four fingertip force you should apply, you have to solve this equation. Now, how can you answer that question? Right? If you have ever thought about it. So, this uh, simple question of a body has some weight and I want to hold it is actually solving this equation and that equation involves a non square matrix right so the general solution of this matrix or the general solution of this matrix is given by the pseudo inverse of w into f plus i minus w hash w into lambda so the general solution for a matrix inverse is given by this equation where this is the pseudo inverse of w w is not an exact inverse so, pseudo inverse of w into f plus i is the identity matrix minus w hash into w into a constant lambda. So, this is the general solution. Okay. So, the general solution for a non square matrix is this one. Now, this is one part, this is another part. Now, if you think a little bit, it is nothing very difficult here. So, if w into w inverse is a real, is a, if w is a square matrix and this is an exact inverse then it is equal to identity matrix i, if it is an exact inverse. So, if this is an exact inverse of this, then it is i, right. But if it is not in exactly, then this is not equal to 0, right. Any matrix a inverse is equal to i, right, provided this is an exact inverse. Bring this one this side, then this becomes equal to 0. Now, if this is not an exact inverse, this will not be 0, right. So, because this is not an exact inverse, we do not write inverse like this, we write it as hash, indicating it is not an exact inverse, right. So, the solution is given by this. Now, this has two parts, one part is this, one part is this. And uh, this is called the pseudo inverse, or the more penrose pseudo inverse. In MATLAB, the command is PINV. So, PINV is pseudo inverse of any matrix. So, you can find inverses of non square also. Now, the interesting part is that this has two parts, this part and this part. This part cannot become equal to 0, because it is not an exact inverse. So, whatever happens, this will not be 0, some value is there. Okay. Now, suppose this object does not weigh anything. This object does not weigh anything. Outer space does not weigh anything. That means, f is equal to 0. So, this part is equal to 0 but this part is not equal to 0. So, it means that even to move an object which does not have any weight or mass, you still need some energy to move it. So, it means to hold a massless object, you still need force, because this one is not 0. So, is that true or it is uh, something wrong I have done here or it is some trick or what. So, if f is equal to 0 means this is 0, 0, 0, it is a massless object. But even then, this will not be 0 because it is not exact. So, there will be some, some numbers there. That means, some force is required to hold a massless object. So, for a massless object, do you need energy to move it or to hold a massless object, do you need force to hold it? What does not exist? Outer space, it is massless. So, to move a massless object, do you have to apply force? This equation is saying that even to move a massless object, you must apply force. 
want to move something in outer space, you have to expend energy and that energy is here. So, when I said I was moving like this, right. So, this fellow did not move, although I am giving energy, where did that energy go? That energy went in here. Why is this happening? Because this is non square, which means it has more degrees of freedom. So, some of the energy went into those extra variables now and it did not do any work, but the energy it took, right. So, please, this is a little difficult to understand, but it is very important because in the physical world, this is the one that governs. Now, how is it related? This is a little easy to understand because we are talking about grasping an object that uh, for this uh, unequal kind of a uh, uh, that even for a massless object, if this is equal to 0, you still have non-zero here and uh, that is uh, you have to expend energy. So, there will be some terms here, which two terms f x 1 will be there, f x 2 will be there. Lambda is a constant. So, it means that you have something here into a constant that constant can be any positive number. So, to hold an object like this, suppose it has m g is in this direction, what is the fingertip force required? So, it, if m is the mass, m g is this side, you have two fingertip forces. What are the two forces? So, it must be this one plus that one. No, that one has multiple solutions. So, it can be any force greater than m g by 2. Any force greater than m g by 2 is a solution. Any force which is greater than m g by 2 is a solution to that equation. So, to hold an object like this, I can apply any force greater than m g by 2, that is that constant coming in here. So, there is a minimum force and a multiple of that. Why? Because if I say it has to be exactly m g by 2, there is no exact in the real world, right. Suppose this is 1 and it is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 if it is 0 0.49999, it is not 0 0.5 or if it is 5, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then also it is not exact. That means, there is nothing like an exact. You have multiple solutions of that in the real world. So, here it is saying that there is a minimum solution plus there are other. Now, in terms of uh, our whatever we are talking in terms of robotics, uh, what relation this fellow has here is something to to understand and correlate that the moment you have a redundant manipulator, it means you have more number of degrees of freedom than required to do a task. For example, redundancy means uh, more DOF than task uh, requirement. For example, uh, we have three degrees of freedom here of this manipulator, but I only want to go to x y. So, this is redundant. So, there is 3, theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 and the task is in x y plane. So, it is only x y, two coordinates it can have, whereas you have 3 here. So, this is a redundant system. So, redundant manipulators normally are more than 6 degrees of freedom. They can be 7, 8, 9, 10. Our hand is redundant. There are 7 degrees of freedom, okay. This one is highly redundant. There's 22 degrees of freedom, okay. So, what does it mean mathematically is that the J matrix is not a square matrix. That's what it means. And if the J matrix is not a square matrix, then you have more variables here than there. So, you have some variables which are free now. Okay. So, what you can do is you can play with them and uh, coming back to the equation, x dot is equal to j into theta dot. So, if this is non square m into a n, then theta dot is equal to j hash into x dot plus the generalized inverse minus j hash into j into lambda. That is the general solution. So, if j is non square matrix, then it basically means that there are two parts. One part is here, another part is there. So, if you take the example of 3 degree arm, okay, it basically means that there is theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, x y is a function of theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. So, this fellow says that some 
to do one task you can use maybe theta 1, theta 2, to do another task you can use theta 3. Okay. So, here to keep this arm here, I am using three uh, joints or four joints, the other fellows are free which are doing all kinds of things and it is not going anywhere. Okay. So, those fellows which are free are redundant which are here. So, this is what we call the null space. So, mathematically this is called the null space of j. So, if j is non square then you have a null space of j, null means 0 obviously. So, whichever solution is going into the null space is not going anywhere. The solution which is going somewhere is here. So, in a redundant manipulator some solutions, some uh, joints can be used for doing this, some joints can be used for doing something else. One example was here, another example I can give, this is the best example. So, all the fellows which were going doing nothing, they are all going in the null space and the fellows which are doing something are going here now and this is possible only because of the system is redundant. Okay. Uh, we will not go beyond this, uh, but if you ever work on redundancy, uh, redundancy resolution, the basic theory is here. Okay. Yeah, say for, for example, if you are, for example, the human arm, why is it 7 degree of freedom, why not 6? Because if you have 6, then what is the meaning in terms of solutions? You have a fixed number of solutions, maybe there are 6 solutions. Now, the moment you come towards a singularity here, your solutions are coming down means the rank of the matrix is coming down, the number of solutions is coming down. In this position, you have only one solution. Here you may have 6 solutions or 7 solutions, right? that is the meaning of number of solutions. Now, to do a task, suppose my hand is constrained, I want to put it inside the drawer and do something. What is the meaning of that? So, suppose I have, uh, I have uh, a space like this, I want to pick up this object from here. Now, the arm has 6 degrees of freedom, the arm is coming inside, okay. but it has gone inside the drawer or some cavity. Now, going inside means 1, 1 degree of freedom is constrained now, it is taken off. That means, although this is 6 degree of freedom, 1 or 2 degrees of freedom are lost because they are constrained now. That means, effectively the degree of freedom has become 3 or 4 only. Now, with 3 or 4, you cannot do this task. So, unless you have a redundant arm, lot of your task will get constrained now if you are constraining any degree of freedom. So, for the human arm also the same thing. So, we can do or we can like do, we can eat like this, like this, like this always because this is redundant. If it was not redundant, you probably will have only 2 or 3 solutions, right. And if you constrain any of the solutions, then you cannot do the task at all. That is the reason why we have redundant, okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, just for uh, just for interest okay, that uh, we said that a matrix inverse j is equal to adjoint of j by determinant of j. Okay. This is what we generally say. Okay. Now, uh, if you use any software like MATLAB or Mathematica or whatever, there is a help file and there is a demo file. Okay. In MATLAB, for example, if you are using any function like INV, this is INV is inverse of a matrix will also give you the help on the demo where you can read that how it is actually computing, what is the mathematics behind the computation. And you will be surprised that it does not do it like this. I do not know if any of you have ever noticed that, that the inverse that is found of a matrix is not found this way. Okay. So, in MATLAB if you give this, if you have a matrix 2, 2, 1, 1, this is A and you say I and V A, it will give you the matrix, the inverse matrix. Now, if I add one more, and now say i and v a, what it will do? It will say matrix non square error. Okay. But now suppose I say p i and v a, now it will give you the matrix. Okay. That means it is finding the matrix not by doing this, because if it is non square, it cannot do this. There is nothing like a determinant of a non square matrix. That means it is doing something else. What is it doing? So, what it is doing is this. So, if you have a into a inverse is equal to i. Okay. Now, if I take a inverse into a, this is equal to 0. So, if this is a non square matrix, if I can find the minimum error norm of this equation, then that is your matrix inverse. So, one MATLAB is doing or Mathematica is doing whatever any software does, it basically tries to find this matrix 
by finding the least square solution, least square norm solution of this equation. Okay. So, it, it is valid for a square matrix for a non square matrix also. Okay. So, it does not do it like this, it does it like this, and the theory is here. If you ever use any software, uh, this book Craig does not have the solution, but other books like Yoshikawa and others they have the solution that for redundant manipulator the solution is to be solved like this, and this is how you compute matrix inversion. Okay, so let us not go any more into this, let us just uh, go on to the next part. So, if you ever work on redundant manipulators and things like that, I think uh, in motion planning Dr. Das Gupta will cover some parts of it, what is redundancy, okay, how do you resolve it, etcetera, etcetera. So, this is the theory behind redundancy. Okay, okay now let us uh, go into a more fundamental kind of uh, uh, before we go into control. How does the controller actually work? Okay, some of you are uh, maybe still a little not sure about it. How does the controller actually work? So, I have a manipulator here. I want to pick up this object. Okay. So, the manipulator is here, the object is here and I want to uh, uh, pick up this object. Now, the first thing is the base of this fellow is 0, 0, 0, x 0, y 0 and z 0. Okay, that we put our d s parameter and do all that, that is fine. Now, this object must have some coordinates x, y, and z and some angles theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Okay. So, when I say that the end effector must go here and catch this, what does it mean? It means that it is here, it has to go there. Right? So, this is the vector which I know from then the other vector from here I can go here, then here, here. So, I also know this vector, these two are known. What is not known is this one, but from vector closed loop diagram I can do this plus that is equal to this. So, if I know this vector, I know that vector, I can find that vector, right. Is it okay? Now, how does the controller work? How the controller is going to work is uh, given this x, y, z here. So, this let us say is my position 1 and this is my position 2. So, what it will do is at position 1, it has maybe theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, three angles. So, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 are three angles. So, at position 1, it will find uh, doing inverse kinematics, it will find what is the corresponding angle. Okay. So, at this location from the encoder position, it will it will know what is the corresponding angle theta 1, theta 2, three. Okay. because it has joints as encoders. So, from there it knows. So, theta 1 for example, is 20 degrees, this one is 0 degrees and this one is uh, let us say 260 degrees, just for example. So, at position 1, the three angles are that much. Now, it has to go here. So, at this location it knows what is the x, y, z with reference to this frame. So, it can do inverse kinematics and to come here, what is the inverse kinematic solution also it can do, it can find from inverse kinematics. And suppose we get a solution like this is 30, this is 10, that is uh, 290, just for example. Okay. So, it was here, it has to go there. So, what the controller will do, it will do this minus that okay. for joint 1, this minus that joint 2 this minus that joint 3. So, this is 10 degrees, this is 10 degrees and that is uh, 60, 30 degrees. So, what the controller has to do, it has to move joint 1 by 10 degrees, joint 2 by 10 degrees and joint 3 by 30 degrees. So, if it moves this joints by 10, 10, 30, then this will come there. Okay. So, what the controller will do is, it will simply move joint number 1 by 10 degrees, joint number 2 by 10 degrees and joint number 3 by 30 degrees. Right? Have you followed? How the control actually works? Starting means? So, wherever it is, say for example, it is there. So, the encoders will tell where the, this angles are. So, this is known. Uh, the base of the robot is fixed. Uh, base of the robot is fixed. The robot does not move. The base is fixed. X, Y, Z is fixed. Now, if you are mounting this on a mobile platform, for example, Right now, you can put one frame has to be fixed. So x, y, and z, one frame, the global frame has to be fixed somewhere. Now, with reference to this, this one is moving. So this has a sum cg. So this is moving. Right now, with reference to this, this guy is moving. With reference to this, this guy is moving. So you know the transformations. So you know exactly which is going where. Okay. So how the controller works is essentially it will fix. Uh, it will take the desired position minus the present position and then it will move it by this much, this much, this much. In terms of control system diagram, it is 
is basically like this only. So, this is desired, this is the present, there is some controller P D or P I D, this is the robot and uh, there is a feedback. So, this is your feedback device. So, what it is doing to understand is it is taking the desired position which is there minus the present position which is coming back from encoders and it is doing this minus that getting 10, 10, 10. So, next what it will do is it has to move by this, this and that. So, it will fit a trajectory onto this and then follow the trajectory because it needs position, velocity and acceleration. Is this part clear? Okay, how it moves? Okay. Now, uh, so to move from one joint to another joint what it will do is it will fit a cubic spline and then uh, move. So, suppose uh, let me take one degree of freedom. So, it is here, this is my x axis, that is my y axis, this is some x y. So, from theta 1 to theta 1 dash. Okay. So, this it has only one degree of freedom just to understand. So, this joint has to move from here to there. So, it will do this minus that. Okay. So, simply this minus that will tell it has to move from here to here, uh, so far from here to here in some time t. Okay. So, that means it will have to follow some trajectory. Okay. So, what is the equation of this trajectory? What is the variation of theta? So, what we can do is we can write theta t. Now, inverse kinematics does not have time in the picture. If you would have noticed, it is only telling you theta, it has time is not there in the picture. But in the real world, I need time also. Okay. So, it has to move from here to here in some time t. So, I have to fit a trajectory in terms of time now. Okay. So, in terms if I just draw the graph. So, I am here at theta naught, I have to go at theta final in some time t f. Okay. So, I am here, I have to go there. I want to go from here to there in some time t. So, will it be a straight line? Will it be like this? Will it be like that? Will it be like this? Which one? I hope you are following. It has to go from here to here in some time t, which means that when I am drawing it here, it has to go from here to here in some time t. What kind of trajectory it will have? This must have an equation, right? So, if I write it uh, in the form of a straight line a naught plus a 1 t, then your theta dot t becomes equal to a 1 and theta double dot t becomes equal to 0. So, if this equation is a straight line in terms of t, then it, the velocity is constant and the acceleration is 0. Now, this is a real body, in it is a physical body. So, a physical body cannot, if acceleration is 0, it will not start and it will not stop, acceleration is 0. Again, if the velocity is constant, Cannot start, it cannot start and it cannot stop. So, if there is a physical body here, okay, I am pushing it to go from here to here in some time t. I am going to give some force and will move from here to here. In so, there is a variation of the position, velocity and acceleration also. So, if the, I write the equation like this, then velocity is constant is not possible. This guy is also not possible. That means, a straight line is not possible. Okay. So, if a straight line is not possible, one more term a 1 t squared. Now, what it becomes? It becomes uh, twice a 1 and this fellow becomes equal to plus uh, twice a 1 t, this becomes twice a 1 because a physical body must have position, velocity, acceleration. Okay. So, position, velocity, acceleration. So, if I put a square equation here, a square term, what will happen is this will become a constant, twice a 1 is a constant. Okay. Again, if acceleration is a constant, the body cannot start, it cannot stop. A physical body, it cannot start and stop with zero acceleration. Right? So, the acceleration, when a body moves, it accelerates, then it decelerates and then it stops. So, if you move your hand, when you are picking up an object, if you note. Okay? So, you are starting uh, with an acceleration, then you are going somewhere in the middle, then you are decelerating, then you are catching the object. Right? So, I am trying to fit the trajectory which will follow that. So, this is also not possible. So, if this is not possible, I add one more term, a 1, sorry, a 2, this will be a 2, a 2, this is a 3 t cube, because acceleration was constant, 
So, when you are moving your hand, if you note, it is moving in different accelerations. So, starting it starts, then in the middle it accelerates, then it decelerates. No, acceleration, a constant acceleration for a moving body is not possible. No, if there is a sudden change of acceleration, that is jerk, not a constant acceleration. If a body is moving with constant acceleration, there is no jerk. If a body is moving with constant acceleration, suddenly it stops, then there is jerk now. So, uh, the rate of change of acceleration is defined as jerk, but here it is constant acceleration. Which next step? Yeah, so now if we add one more term, what will happen is uh, plus twice a 3 t squared plus 6 a 3 t. But now, the acceleration is a function of time, so it is not a constant acceleration. The acceleration will increase, then it will decrease. So, when our hand moves, if you note, it accelerates, then in the center, it will decelerate and then come to stop, right. No, 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 no. Acceleration is a function of time, yes acceleration is a function of time, yes, but if I plot it now. Okay. So, what I am saying is, uh, okay, let us just proceed 5 minutes, I think it will become clear. Okay. So, this has 4 constants, this, this, this and this. So, this equation is a cubic polynomial, uh, it has a cubic polynomial, which is the smallest, you cannot come below this, you cannot define the motion in power less than this, you can have more than this, but not less than this. So, I am trying to fit a trajectory, which will take it from here to here in some time t. So, I am writing this uh, equation of the trajectory like this and I am getting the velocity and accelerations like this. Okay. Now, to solve it, I need 4 constraints because there are 4 constants. What are the constraints? So, theta at 0 is equal to 0 or theta naught, theta at time final is equal to theta f. So, it was here initially and then finally, there 2 constraints. Another 2 constraints are velocity at start and velocity at stop have to be 0. Now, your question is answered, I think that you have to put this constraint that when it is starting, the velocity was 0 and acceleration was also 0. When it is stopping, your velocity has to be 0, otherwise it will not stop. So, you cannot have a constant acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So, if your velocity is constant, you can have an acceleration, right. So, here we are putting 4 constraints. So, if we put this 4 constraints in here, we will get 4 equations. So, let me put the 4 uh, constraints in here. So, the first one is saying at time is equal to 0. So, t becomes 0, this fellow becomes theta naught, theta naught is equal to uh, theta naught is equal to a naught. So, the first one I am getting one equation. The second one at theta f, it is becoming theta f at time final. So, a a naught plus a 1 t f plus a 2 t f squared plus a 3 t f cube, right. Then I am taking this one, velocity is 0 at start. So, velocity is equal, this is the velocity equation. This is the position equation, this is the velocity equation. So, velocity is equal to 0 at start, meaning this is 0, this is 0, uh, that a 1 is equal to 0, is equal to a 1. At time is equal to 0, I just put time t is equal to 0. I get this equation. And time, final equation is also it is 0 time of final is also 0. So, this is 0 at time t f. So, time this is velocity equation. So, it is a 1 is 0. So, I am not writing it. So, twice a 2 t plus twice a 3 t square. Okay. So, these two I am putting in this equation, these two I am putting in this equation. So, I get 4 equations. So, this is already solved. This one is already solved. Okay. So, I have to solve these two. So, there are 2 unknowns and 2 equations, so I can solve them. Okay. So, there are 2 unknowns and 2, two, uh, two equations. So, the 2 unknowns are a 2 and a 3 and there are 2 equations, right. So, I can solve them, right. So, if I solve them, so I can find the values of a naught, a 1, a 2, a 3. So, if you solve it, then a 1 is equal to 0, a naught is equal to theta naught and uh, 
a 2 as far as I remember is p f squared by theta f minus theta naught. Okay, this is solved in Craig, you can have a look. I do not remember what was the exact expression, but it comes out something like this minus phi p f cube theta f minus theta naught. So, these are the values of those four constants. So, we can simply put it in the equation theta t is equal to a naught plus a 1 t plus a 2 t squared plus a 3 t cube. So, I found my a 1, a 2, a 3, oh, sorry, this is a. Okay. So, I have got all these constants. Now, I have put them in in terms of theta f, theta naught, start point, end point, time. So, I have the equation of the arm now, of the joint, rather, not arm. Right. So, this is the trajectory of the joint now. So, the joint has to move from 10 degrees to 30 degrees in some time t. What is the equation? This is the equation of the joint. So, now uh, let us look at a very sm simple uh, problem and we will be able to understand this better. Suppose this one goes from 15 degrees to 75 degrees in time t is equal to 3 seconds. So, this is an arm which is going from 15 degrees to 75 degrees means the theta is going from 15 degrees to 75 degrees in time 3 seconds. A 2 is 2 T f squared by So, you have to compute the values of this and this. So, this is a T f is known final total time, this is start angle, this is end angle. Okay. So, I can compute this, put it in this equation. Okay. So, from here also I can find what is theta dot is equal to a 1 plus uh, twice a 2 t plus twice a 3 t squared and we have theta double dot t which is equal to twice a 2 plus 6 a 3 so, I get position, velocity, acceleration. So, this uh, problem will make it clear that the joint has to move from 15 degrees to 75 degrees in time 3 seconds. Okay. So, each joint will have its own controller which will change, which will control that joint only. So, if there are 6 degrees of freedom, there will be each joint it knows it has to move by how much. So, the start and the end of all joints is the same, otherwise, it will start jerking. Okay. So, what it will do is it will get this equation, find the values of A, put it in there. It will find the velocity, it will find the acceleration. Plot this. This is my time t. Okay. So, it is moving from 15 degrees. So, this is 15 degrees to 75 degrees in time 3 seconds. Okay. So, this is my total motion. So, if you plot the position graph, this is the position graph. The position graph will be something like this. So, it is starting slowly, it is going like this, then it is going like this. So, if you look at your hand motion, it is not straight line at the joint, I mean the joint motion, it will not be linear, it will have this kind of a profile. Okay. Next is the velocity, uh, the velocity will start like this. Okay. So, the velocity graph let us here, so the velocity will be like this, this is T f 3 seconds, 1.5 seconds. So, this is my theta dot graph, so the velocity will increase, it will come in the center then it will decrease and then become 0 again. What about acceleration? Acceleration will start starting it will have very high acceleration. In the center, it is reverse the direction, it will become deceleration and then it will start dropping it and then it will go and stop. Okay. So, now at the joint level, uh, we also understand that what the controller does using inverse kinematics, it finds the desired angle. Uh, minus the present angle, then it fits this one uh, onto the joint trajectory, then finds the position variation, uh, velocity variation and acceleration. So, how did I get this graph? So, this is like say I can divide it into small segments, right? So, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 second. So, I take 0.1, uh, put it in this equation, I get what is theta, then I take 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, I get theta and that is how I have drawn this graph. Similarly, for position also, I take uh, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, that is how I am simulating it. And then we can get the velocity graph, then here also I do the same, I get the acceleration graph. So, what the controller actually does is it finds desired position minus present position, fits a cubic polynomial or, or higher order polynomial onto the joint, finds the position, velocity, acceleration at different instants of time 
and then moves it like that. Okay, so that is how the controller works. Okay, so uh, what the controller will be doing is it will find out this uh, position velocity accelerations, and then at different instance of time it will change the position velocity acceleration. Okay, the only problem here is that you see that at start the acceleration is very high. Again, at the end the acceleration is very high. Now, in a real system, a body cannot be at rest and have a high acceleration, it is not possible. So, this is showing the velocity is 0 here, velocity is 0 here. This is showing when time is equal to 0, acceleration is that much, which is not possible. So, when a motor starts, it cannot also start with very high acceleration, it will take some time to build the acceleration. So, in the real world, the, the graph will look like this. So, you can fit this is called a cubic polynomial and this is called trajectory planning. So, what the controller does, it simply does this minus that, fits this one, gets the position, velocity and acceleration and then at every instance of time, it knows it has to go from here to here in how much time. So, at every instance of time, it will find and what is the velocity, what is the acceleration and it will just keep following that. that will depend on the time. So, once you use this equation for a particular start and end and time, this gets fixed. Uh -uh. Only one. Equation has three, term is three or power, order three, power three. No, as far as the controller is considered, it is going from here to here, then here to here, here to here, here to here like that. Uh, no, this is not the order of the controller, this is the equation of the trajectory. The PD or the PID controller, that will have the equation of the controller. If for example, if it is mass into acceleration plus B x dot plus k x, if you are controlling this using a PD controller, uh, k p into x uh, minus minus k d into x dot this is the controller, this is the order of the controller you are talking about, right. This is equation of the trajectory, this is not the order of the controller. Okay. So, you are enforcing this with a controller now, you have not come that far. So, now how do you design this one to enforce this one, okay. Okay, so, I uh, will stop here and then, so slowly we are moving towards the control part. This is exactly how the controller, uh, the robot manipulator works and this is to show the connection between forward kinematics, inverse kinematics control, where is it uh, related. Okay. This is given in the textbook Craig as uh, trajectory planning. The same problem is, with others it wants, a body is at rest, right? Ah, yes. So, if you are going from uh, two positions, say for example, it is going from here to here uh, via this point, it has to go like this fit one trajectory from here to here and one trajectory from here to here. And here, instead of putting that velocity dot, so this is C f 1 and this is C f 2, putting it at 0, you put some value as x. So, the end velocity of this guy is the start velocity of that guy, right. So, it is the same thing, but only here the end velocity is not 0. So, the end of this is equal to start of that. So, you can keep going like that. When we say via point, in well language also you can do via point. So, what it does is it simply does this. Okay. Initial acceleration depends on the motor acceleration. So, it will take some time to build that acceleration. No, it will not vibrate. Vibration comes if there is sudden change of acceleration. Here it is gradually, the motor will gradually start. It does not simply go from 0 to 3000 in uh, I mean in very short time. 